Hey there folks, Jeremiah the Geometry Cowboy here talking to you about points, lines, and planes. You know what they call a happy cowboy? A Jolly Rancher! <laughs> First thing we're going to talk about is an undefined term. That's a word that is explained using examples and descriptions. So in this particular lesson, we're going to be talking about three undefined terms, points, lines, and planes. And here you can see points in red, lines in green, and our plane in blue. The next vocabulary term is a point. That's an undefined term in geometry representing a specific location, represented by a dot and commonly denoted by a capital letter. So here you can see our points are all in red over here. These red dots are our points. They're a specific location, okay? They don't take up any mass, any space. It's just a particular location on this plane in this region. Points are denoted by capital letters. Here you can see H, I, D, G, F, J and K would be our points. B does not represent a point and Q does not represent a point because there's no little red dot next to it. We'll get into what those are in a second. Now a line is an undefined term made up of an infinite number of points having no thickness or width. So here you can see our lines in green here and we have a line, line B, because it has a little lowercase letter at the end of it that we can denote several different ways. To denote a line, you just need to put two points that are on the line and then draw the little line symbol above it. Line B, we can call line DG, line GD, line DF, or line FD. And we denote those lines by putting a little line symbol above the two points with arrows at either end. Just like here, if we talk about this vertical line that's here, we could say that this is line GI or IG, JI or IJ. Those would all denote the same line. Now note, in order to define a line, you only need two points, okay? You don't need three in a row like here. You just need two points in order to write a line. Now a plane is an undefined term in geometry possessing a flat surface made up of points that has no depth and extends indefinitely in all directions. So in our example over here, this blue part would be our plane and everything inside would be inside of our plane. Now a plane has no depth, meaning that its thickness is the same as a point because a point just describes a location. It doesn't have any thickness or mass actually. So it has no depth and extends indefinitely in all directions. So notice that our lines in green have arrows at either end. That's because they go on forever in those directions. Now a plane, we can't draw an arrow at the end of this edge, it doesn't make any sense. So we just assume when you see a plane that it extends indefinitely this way, this way, this way, and this way. Think about holding up a sheet of paper in front of you that continued forward, left, right, and backward forever. That would be what a plane would be like, except a paper has depth. A plane does not have any depth. It's not thick at all. How do we describe this plane in blue? Well, there's a couple different ways. First would be to look for a capital letter in the corner of the plane. Here you can see this Q that doesn't have a point next to it. This Q is describing our plane in blue. So we would say plane Q, and that would describe this plane. Now, just like we chose two points on a line to describe that line, so this would be line DG, you could choose three points to describe a plane. But the catch is all three points cannot be on the same line. So we could describe this plane, plane Q, also as plane HDG or HGD or DHG or HGF or FGH. All of those would describe this plane. So again, you could choose three points that do not lie on the same line to describe a particular plane. If they lie on the same line, you could actually draw multiple different planes going through a line. So it wouldn't describe just one particular plane like three non-collinear points would. Now collinear, I just described what collinear is. It's points that lie on the same line. So here you can see points D, G, and F are collinear because D, G, and F all lie on the same green line. Points J, G, and I, J, G, and I are collinear. They lie on the same line. Points G and K are collinear. Whoa, there's no line drawn through that. That's okay. Any two points you can draw a line through. So if you pick any two points, those two points will be collinear because you can draw a line through any two points. G, F, and H, G, F, and H, those would not be collinear because you cannot draw one line going through those three points. Coplanar would be points that lie on the same plane. 
So we talked earlier here, our plane would be plane Q in blue. Points G, F, H, and D would be coplanar. G, F, H, and D all lie on this same plane, plane Q. Points J, G, and K are coplanar. J, J is right here. G and K, ooh, how does that work? Well, just like you can draw a line through any two points, you can draw a plane through any three points. So what we say is that any three points, you could pick any three points at random, and those three points will be coplanar because you can make a plane through any three points, just like you can draw a line through any two points. Points G, F, H, and K are not coplanar. So G, F, H, and K. Yeah, those would not be coplanar because G, F, and H are on the same plane. K is not. Now, an intersection is a set of points common to two or more geometric figures. So in our first example here, we have two planes, plane M and plane K. And remember, with planes, you have to imagine that they go on in each direction forever. So these two planes then would intersect in a line. And this line we can call line AB or line BA. So line AB or line BA is the intersection of planes M and K. And remember, if it's a plane intersecting another plane, those two planes will intersect in a line always, okay? Two planes that intersect, intersect to form a line. Over here, we have two lines, line DF and line JI. And those two lines, we can see intersect at a point, and that point would be point G. So note, any two lines that intersect will always intersect at a point. Any two planes that intersect will always intersect in a line. Space is a boundless three-dimensional set of all points. So here you can see all of these figures exist within space. We all exist within space. Everybody exists within space because it's the boundless three-dimensional set of all points. It's what everything is contained within. Now you got the vocab. It's example time. Now example one says which of the following points are coplanar. So we're looking at this particular figure. We have two planes. We have plane one, in plane two. So in plane one, we can see that points G, E, O, and B all exist within that pink plane. So those points would all be coplanar. In plane two, we see that points F, A, L, I, and C are all within that green plane. So those points would all be coplanar as well. Part B, we have two planes, plane P and plane Q. In plane P, we see that A, B, C, and D, those points all exist within plane P. Points A, B, C, and E all exist within plane Q. Now notice, points A, B, and C exist within both planes. And that's why we said when we name a plane, we can't pick three collinear points because they could technically exist within multiple planes. You need to pick three non-collinear points if you want to describe a plane. Example two says name all sets of three collinear points. So we look at this plane, we have plane M, and in this plane we have a line that has three points, point A, point B, and point C, all exist within the same line, therefore those points are all collinear. We also have another line, a line that has point D, B, and F, so those three points would also be collinear. Part B, same thing, we have this time plane R, and plane R has two lines in it, and one of those lines has points A, P, and B in one line. It also has another line that has points C, P, and D. So those points would all be collinear. Lastly, we have this line that goes through plane R at point D. And this line has three points on it as well. Point J, D, and K. Those would all be collinear because they all exist within the same line. Example three says state the point where line AB and line Q intersect. So line AB, where is that? Well, this is line AB right here because it goes through those two points. And then line Q, where is that? Oh, you see how this little Q is at the end of the line? Well, this line, right, we could refer to it as line DB or BD or DF or FD or FB or BF. We could also call it line Q because it has a little lowercase letter at the end of it. So line AB and line Q intersect at this point right here, which would be point B. Part B, we have line AB. Where's line AB? That would be right here. And where is line Q? Well, we have this little lowercase Q at the end of our line, meaning that these two lines would then intersect at 
point P, and you're done. Now, example four says state the line where plane ABD and plane Q intersect. So plane ABD, okay, that would be the bottom of this cube because we have three non-collinear points that describes this blue plane. Plane Q, we look at the top, oh, we got this Q in the corner. That means that this orange top of our cube would be the plane Q. Where do they intersect? Well, the top of a cube and a bottom of a cube, even if it went on indefinitely forever in either direction, they would never intersect. So plane ABD and plane Q do not intersect. Now part B, we have plane ABD. Okay, so these three non-collinear points would describe this plane, which we could also call plane P. And then plane Q, we got a little Q in the corner over here, so that would describe this plane right here. Now where do those two planes intersect? Plane ABD and plane Q. Well, they intersect at this given line right here, right? And that line would be line AB or line BA or line AC or line CA or line BC or line CB. However you want to describe that line, this given line is where the two planes intersect. So I called it line AB. Now example five is how many planes are shown in the figure below. So here we have plane M and plane K and those planes intersect at line AB. So in this figure, we can see that we only have plane M and plane K. So there are two planes in this figure. Part B, we have a cube. And in this cube, we already saw that there's a top and a bottom that would be considered planes. Well, what about all the sides? Yeah, there's also four sides. So if we have four sides and a top and a bottom, then we would have six planes. Lastly, we have this dodecahedron. And if we were to count these, let's count the planes. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six on the front. And then we count on the back. One, two, three, four, five, six on the back side. So if you add those sixes together, we end up getting 12 planes. And again, the sides of three dimensional figures, we can call planes as long as they're flat surfaces. This is called a dodecahedron because it has 12 faces, 12 planes. Quit horsing around, time for you trap. So that says, given the figure to the right, answer the following question. So name four coplanar points. So coplanar means points that are on the same plane. So here you can see we have this box. And on this box, remember, the top, the bottom, the left side, the right side, the back and the front, those are all considered planes. So any points that are on those particular sides would all be coplanar. So let's look at the top of the box. On the top of the box, we have points A, B, C, and D. We also have points M. W and N. Those would all be considered coplanar because they're all on the same plane. On the bottom of the box, we have points F, G, H, and E. Those would all be coplanar. On the right side of the box, we have points D, C, H, and E. Those would be coplanar. Points A, B, G, F, and X would all be coplanar on the left side of the box. And then on the back of the box, we have points B, C, H, and G. Those would all be considered coplanar. So any of these answers would be correct. Now, name three collinear points. So collinear means they have to be on the same line, all three points. Well, it looks like there's only two sets of three collinear points. We have points M, W, and N all exist on the same line. So those would be considered collinear. And then points X, W, and V all exist on the same line. So those would also be considered collinear. Then part C, at what point does line XV intersect plane ABCD? Well, where's plane ABCD? Plane ABCD, we could have just called it plane ABC, but that is the top of the box. So at what point does line XV, would be this line right here, intersect plane ABCD, the top of the box? That would be at point W, right? That's where this line intersects the box. You can tell by these dashes that that's where the line goes inside the box and then it exits the box at point X. So point W would be the answer to this question. Then part D, is line XV contained in plane ABCD? So line XV, where's that? Well, we said that was this one. Is it contained in plane ABCD? No, it just intersects it at point W. All the points in the line have to be on that plane. 
So what about line MN? Line MN is this one right here. And yes, that line is completely contained within plane ABCD. So line XV is not contained within plane ABCD, but line MN is contained within plane ABCD.